We present our work called Playable Video Generation, published at CVPR 2021. The video on this slide is played using our model, trained on the tennis dataset. First, let's look where Playable Video Generation lands in the landscape of video synthesis. In 2021, video generators achieve high resolution comparable to that of the best image models. Such methods, despite being able to generate a realistic video, don't offer precise control over the generated sequence. We get a plausible motion only, and therefore we call this generation process as do something. Then we also have animation methods. Given a driving sequence, we generate a video by retargeting motions to the source frame. The driving video has to be provided before generation. The generated sequence follows the driving sequence exactly, and we therefore refer to this way as do as I do generation. In some cases, neither the driving video nor the random sequence solve the issue. Imagine we would like to move the tennis player where the ball will be. The do something approach won't help as it does not control the motion. The do as I do techniques also do not provide a solution here since for each situation in the game we need a corresponding driving video which is problematic. Similarly for breakout we'd like to move the platform to hit the ball or grab the object using a robot arm. A do as I say technique is required which will allow us to specify a high level action sequence. Do something techniques allow us to generate, do as I do to animate and do as I say to play. At training time, our model observes only unlabeled videos. In other words, it does not know which actions happen in the video. This distinguishes our work from prior conditional video synthesis methods, which require action labels for each video. Instead, our model learns to identify meaningful actions and to generate sequences that correspond to them. At inference time, Given a single frame, the model allows us to move the player with the use of the learned actions. How to train such a model without any labels? Given two consecutive frames, we first embed them using an encoder network to obtain image features. Some action happened between these two frames and the action network seeks to identify which action exactly. After the action is identified, the future frame is fully determined by the feature embedding of the previous frame plus the identified action. Hence, an updated feature embedding can be generated by the dynamics model implemented here as a recurrent neural network with a previous state. We then can generate the next frame using the new state of the dynamics network. Here we see the first opportunity for cell supervision we found pure image space supervision insufficient here. We move on by enrolling the network in time, generating several frames. We then embed the generated frames again using the encoder and use cell supervision for actions, features, and finally images. The main caveat is in the action representation. For example, here we see three instances of the same action move right. Different agents perform the action differently. Therefore, a single action class label is not sufficient. Actions consist of deterministic part, AT, describing which action should be used. Discrete action label does not account for how much action is performed, action speed, and other factors. To address this, we add action variability. Recall that our model is unsupervised and we don't supervise any of these action parts. So how to learn them? We embed image features again to get action embeddings. We then subtract the embeddings to obtain the difference vector dt. A fully connected network then uses dt to predict one hot action label. 
If we visualize the space of DT and use different colors to present each action class, as recognized by the fully connected network, we will see that the same actions are located close to each other in this space. We compute action centroids and use the spread from the centroid as an action variability measure computed as shown here. The intuition is that the farther the action is from a center, the more differently is its execution from the average execution. For tennis, the model learns seven distinct actions which correspond to move right, advance to the net, move back, move left, stay and other actions. We can see that these actions are consistent in each column. Each row represents a different way of executing the action, including varying speed, direction and the way the action is performed. Similarly, for robot arm movements, we observe clear actions such as move left, move right, move top, as well as diagonal actions such as action 4. To further visualize the action space, we perform action variability interpolation. For these five actions, we set action variability to zero, then we move from one action centroid to another and render the videos. We clearly see a diagonal action as a result of interpolating variability between move left and advance to the net. We observe a similar behavior as we interpolate between different action pairs. For example, action 6 is stay in the same place. When we move the centroid toward that action, we observe that the action speed reduces. At inference time, only the encoder, the decoder and the dynamics network are used. We connect the dynamics network to a game controller of the user and the user can now play a video. We implemented a demo that runs in a browser purely in JavaScript and we performed a user study to assign the actions to their one-hot encodings. Let's play now. First, we play breakout. There are three actions, move left, right and stay. As the user presses the buttons, the platform moves accordingly. We can pick a different starting frame by clicking U. The model will learn to generate plausible trajectories for the ball. The model will also learn that the trajectory of the ball is fully determined by the platform. Hence, it's not affected by action buttons. The ball can hit bricks, reflect. One hint to identify that the video is generated is that the score is fixed. The model didn't learn to update it. We can similarly play tennis and move the robot arm. We can clearly see when the user presses the buttons, the agent performs the corresponding action. To know more details, please read our paper, visit the project website, run our code, and you can play.